Hey everyone, today we're going to do properties of logarithms. This is always a very confusing unit for people, especially if it's the first time they've seen it. Um, but uh, hopefully we can clear up some of these things. I want to build some intuition in this so it's not just a bunch of magic that's, that seems to be happening behind the scenes. Okay, um, So yeah, so let's get started right away. Uh, first of all, I want to draw your attention to this uh, equation right here. Log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 3. Everyone thinks, or if you haven't seen logarithms before, you, you might think that that would be log base 3 of 9 plus 3. Adding on the outside becomes adding on the inside makes sense, right? But if we look closely, log base 3 of 9 is 2, right? Because it's asking 3 to what power is 9. That's 2. And log base 3 of 3 is 1. You add those together, that becomes 3. But we have a problem. Log base 3 of 27 is 3, not log base 3 of 12. Um, in fact, log base 3 of 12, that's probably some ugly decimal that keeps going on and on and on. So um, so I want to point out right away, this is not the way that uh, logs work. Okay, and You might have some recollection of that from before. Um, what actually happens is that log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 3, that's 2 plus 1 equals 3, that must become log base 3 of 27, which happens to be 9 times 3. So that looks really, really strange, that adding on the outside becomes multiplication on the inside. Um, let's, let's build up the intuition of this for just a little bit more. And uh, to do that, I'll first want to talk about what, uh, and remind you, what the different parts of the exponent are. Okay? Um, so let's say we have 3 to the 4 equals 81. Okay? That 3 down there, that's the base. And the 4 up there, we call that the exponent. Right? Um, and the 81, for lack of a better word right now, let's just call that the answer, right? That's what 3 to the 4th is, okay? Well, if we re rearrange that into logarithmic form, we get log base 3 of 81 equals 4, right? So that 3 down there, that's the base. And the 4 out here becomes the exponent, right? Well, that whole log on the left side, that's equal to the exponent. So another way of looking at it is saying that whole thing is the exponent, Right? What? I know, crazy. So, if that whole thing is the exponent, then any kind of adding or subtracting or multiplying you do is kind of the same as when we do it with actual exponents. All right? Because we are doing this to an exponent. All right? Let's, uh, let's look at uh, this next section and see if we can figure out what that means. So, if, for example, I have b to the m times b to the n and I multiply those, that means you add the exponents, right? Well, you got to think of those exponents are what we're dealing with when we're adding logs, okay? If you have log base b of x times y, well, the only way you can get that is if you add that whole exponent. Log base b of x, that's an exponent. And log base b of y, that's an exponent. That's kind of like the m plus n from the left. And on the left side over there, that b to the m times b to the n, that's that answer I was talking about before. That's very much like x times y. Okay, so hopefully you see those parallels and see kind of a, a, an idea of why is it that when you add logs, when you add these things that are exponents, you actually have to multiply them on the inside lo of the logarithm. Um, let's, uh, let's keep going with subtraction. Uh, you might think for a second, oh, what, what, is, uh, what happens when we subtract the exponents, the powers? Okay, well, m minus n, if you remember, that's when you have to divide the whole thing. So b to the m over b to the n. The same thing's going to happen with logs, only remember logarithm is an inverse, so the division happens uh, on the inside, whereas the subtraction is on the outside. Okay, so log base b of x minus log base b of y, that's log base b of x over y. Okay, same deal as before, x over y, that is b to the m over b to the n, that's the analog, and uh, on the right there, that's the subtraction there, that's what's happening between the exponents, m minus n. Um, yeah, let's look at the, the third one I want to show you, is what if, what if we have, how do we get to multiply two powers, right? It's not when you're multiplying the bases, um, b to the m times a. Well, that happens when you have the entire function to the exponent, right? b to the m to the a, okay? Now kind of uh, undo that, work backwards, and you go, all right, well, what if we had something to power inside a logarithm? Well, that would be very much like that 81 up there. That would be the answer, quote-unquote, to the power a. And, uh, yeah, that would be equal to multiplying them, just like the m times a on the left over there. 
okay? Um, yeah, so over there on the left, x to the a, that's, that's, that's kind of like the b to the m to the a. And on the right over there, that's the multiplication, just like it was m times a, all right? Um, just to kind of side note here real quick, I want to point out something I haven't mentioned before. So you guys remember that log of 5 means log base 10 of 5. Mathematicians are just lazy and uh, would rather write as little as possible. And log base 10 is one of the most common ones. So if you see that, remember that's what that means. Another thing you'll see though is this ln or natural log. Okay, um, Natural log of 5 means log base e of 5. <coughs> So don't don't be tripped up by that. That e is just a number, okay? It's kind of close to 2.718. It's actually something we call an irrational number. Um, it's uh, the decimal keeps on going forever and never repeats, yada yada. But um, so it's just kind of like if we made up something and said, oh, let's say lp of five means log base pi pi of five. Um, no, that's not a real uh, real symbol in math, okay? But just it, pretend like it was, that's all it would mean. So ln up here, natural log, just means log a certain kind of base. And uh, this e is really important because a lot, we'll use that e a lot um, in something called compounding interest, and it's a, it's a number that comes up so much in math, it's just it's really, really uh, a big number, kind of like uh, pi keeps showing up in geometry, e keeps showing up in, uh, in number theory and, and other parts of math. Um, so uh, yeah, just remember that, and don't be freaked out about it. it. They act the same way as the other logs, okay? All right, moving on. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about, the first kind of problem I want you to be able to do is expanding logarithms, okay? So it's using the rules on the other side of the sheet of paper, and if you start with just one log function like this, log base 6 of 7x, or 7 times x, um, expanding means pulling as many things out as possible and then simplifying each part as possible, okay? So let's just do this first one together, or this first few together. Log base 6 of 7 times x. Well, remember, multiplication, the way you get exponents to multiply uh, or bases to multiply is you add those exponents. So it's going to be log base 6 of 7 plus log base 6 of x, okay? Uh, to kind of continue building up your intuition, what if 6 to the m was 7 and 6 to the n was x. Well, if you had 7 times x, which is kind of what we have right on the inside there, that'd be the same as 6 to the m times 6 to the n, and that's equal to adding those exponents, m plus n. So if you think of log base 6 to the 7 as m and log base 6 to the x as n, which it is according to these two equations, right? If you rewrite those into uh, a, a logarithmic form, it would look exactly like that. Then you literally get m plus n as your answer, okay? Just kind of continuing to build up your intuition there. Um, all right, let's try this next one. Log of 100 times m. Remember, that's log base 10, but I'm not going to write that because uh, we don't need to. Now, one thing that students always forget to do is simplify something if they are able to. So I picked this one because I want you guys to see log of 100 you can, that actually is log base 10 of 100, and you can ask the question, oh, 10 to what power is 100? Well, the answer to that is 2. So your final answer is 2 plus log of m. Okay, just a little simplification that it's always good to look out for and make sure you, you do if it's possible. All right, let's try the next one. So that's log base 3 of 3 to the 4th over c. Now you might look at it and go, oh, there's that 4th, uh, that, that power in there. Maybe we can... Uh, and I know it sounds like magic to me to say pull it out, but I might uh, that I might say that from time to time. Um, but the the issue is that fraction bar is actually the first thing that uh, that is kind of in the way. So I'm going to change that into subtraction first. Okay, so we have log base three of three to the fourth minus log base three of c. Okay, again we can simplify this, and if you remember from uh, practicing that, if you have the base. Uh, of a logarithm and the base of an exponent inside the logarithm, if those are the same, then the value is just the exponent. So we get 4 minus log base 3 of c. Okay, that's one way to do that. Another way some people might say is, okay, let's let's use that third rule we came with uh, came up with on the front back there about uh, you know exponents to powers inside of logarithms. Wouldn't we get? Um, there's another way to do it. Wouldn't we get 4 times log base 3 of 3? And yeah, you would. You could definitely do that. And you still have the minus log base 3 of c. 
What ends up happening though is log base 3 of 3, that right there, that is equal to 1 because you're saying 3 to what power is 3? Oh, 3 to the first power equals 1. So that little thing right there circled as 1, that means that uh, it's just 4 times 1, or 4, minus log base 3 of c. And check that out, we got the exact same answer. Pretty cool, huh? So uh, yeah, whichever way is most comfortable for you to do, feel free to go that way and do that. That's great. Let's do one more problem here. Uh, if we get x, oh yeah, this last one is just a simple matter of a, there's a power inside the logarithm. So we're going to say, well, that's the same as multiplication. So uh, we can expand it by saying x times log base 5 of 7. Okay, That's how you expand logarithms. I'm going to give you a hint on this next problem. Uh, my hint is just that Remember, the square root of x is x to the one-half power, and that should make that problem a lot easier. So go ahead and do these next two before coming to class, all right, before coming to class. And you'll share that with your classmates, and you can check and see if you guys all understand uh, together. All right, let's move on to the last part. That's condensing logarithms. That's the opposite of what we just did. Expanding means pulling all the parts into as many parts as possible. Condensing means taking maybe perhaps multiple logarithms and condensing them into one and even simplifying it if possible. So this first one I chose to do because it's easy to check, okay? Um, remember that adding logarithms is the same as if you multiply on the inside. And I think it's always helpful to remember input, input versus output, okay? Adding the outputs becomes multiplying the inputs. Of course, we can multiply two times eight and we get 16. And uh, we can also do this power in our heads. 2 to what power equals 16? Well, that's 2 to the 4th. So the answer, it's equal, that whole exponent is equal to 4 right there. And we can check our work pretty easily because log base 2 of 2 is 1. Log base 2 of 8 is 3. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So awesome. That matched what we wanted. Sweet. That reminds me of our joke that I need to include. Um, you know that uh, atheists actually have a really hard time doing these problems because they just don't believe in higher powers. Um, okay, moving on. <laughs> this next problem I chose because uh, it's, it's tricky when you have uh, the subtraction or addition or whatever it is happening on the inside and the outside. And a lot of times I will trick students just by having it occur on the inside. Well, um, just as a kind of side note, uh, I've got my thought cloud over here. Having subtraction on the inside of a log is a bit like having subtraction on the inside of a square root or any kind of radical function. You can't do anything with that, right? You want to probably tr simplify that 4, but because of the subtraction and the multiplication with x, you just can't do anything there, okay? So of these two subtractions, uh, both inside and outside the log, the only one that we're going to use to turn into division is the one outside the log. Don't be tripped up. The one inside the log does not become division. It's already on the input. Okay, So this one that I've got the red arrow pointing to, that's going to become division once we move it inside the log. And our equation becomes log of 4x minus 3, notice the minus is still there, all divided by x. And all of that is inside the logarithm. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, with this last problem, uh, there's actually multiple steps, which is why I wanted to do this one. First thing you notice I did was uh, when you're multiplying by an exponent, or multiplying by a logarithm, it becomes an exponent on the inside, becomes a power. So we change those into log of x squared plus log of y to the fourth. And then, after that, uh, the addition on the outside can become multiplication, so we can condense it further and say all, all of it together is just log of x, to the, uh, x squared times y to the fourth. Uh, now you might be asking, oh, could we have added those first? Well, not really, because we have those uh, the 2 and the 4 on the outside being multiplied. That would change what that value is if we didn't include those somehow. And because those are different, we can't just add them. So, yeah. Here's what I want you to do. I gave you a few other ones to try. Um, yeah, that's the answer. I, I want you to try the rest of these, again, before coming to class, and you're going to share with your classmates what you got. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more why these these crazy logarithms, why they act like this, which is totally, totally bizarre at first, but when you start to really think about it, it starts to make sense. So, thanks a bunch, and see you guys in class.